How do you do? Centuries ago, a wealthy man named Job lost everything when his world turned upside down. Nothing made sense, and he cried out, I am full of confusion. More recently, a young girl cried the very same thing for the same reason. She tried various ways to find peace, but peace didn't come until her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Detective, my wife is a threat to our kids. Now, now tell me again what she said. She said, if I can't have the children, nobody will. Well, sometimes distraught people will say anything, but we can't take the chance on a threat like that. It's better if you take the children somewhere safe until the divorce is final. I'll send them to my mother in Arkansas. Well, that's far enough from Florida to be safe. Did you get a lot of pictures? Yes, um, ones you can use in court. Oh, I hope it doesn't come to that. Oh, don't worry. The courts do not take kindly to this sort of situation. You know any good lawyers? Oh, plenty. I'll give you a list. Oh, don't bother. Just give me the number of the best one. Presenting the Prince of Peace, this is Unshackled. True life stories of real people dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. In their own strength, staff at Pacific Garden Mission could not accomplish the extraordinary things that happen at the old lighthouse. Hundreds of men, women, and children are fed nourishing meals. Ragged clothing and worn out shoes are exchanged for better ones. All because friends like you who care enough to send financial gifts aid this endeavor as the mission helps hundreds of people each day. But the physical condition of homeless people often reflects the spiritual emptiness that led to this lamentable state. Mission pastors and counselors share the good news that can change everything. In their own strength, they couldn't accomplish this. But they have a helper, and his strength never fails. He is the source of this testimony. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3507 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. You kids don't have to stay with Grandma anymore. And we have a new home, new rules. Maddie's the oldest, so she's in charge when I'm working. Uh, Stanley and Diane, you help Maddie any way she says. You'll answer to me if you make trouble. Oh, goodness. Here, that guy is. Your mom won't be living with us anymore. The woman in this story was a girl of nine when, without explanation, her family splintered. This is the story of how that split confused and derailed her. Parental guidance is suggested due to the subject matter contained in the true testimony of Diane Truitt, Part 1, right now on Unshackled. No one ever told me why Mother vanished from our life. Not my paternal grandmother in Arkansas, where we three siblings went by Greyhound bus and stayed the summer. Not even my mother's sister. We spent the summer with my aunt after I finished third grade. Even there, mother wasn't allowed to visit. And dad never explained anything. He called my aunt and told her to bring us home because he had gotten married again. All the way there, I quietly sobbed. Kids, this is your stepmother, Julie. Uh, hi, Julie. Now, you don't have to call her mom. You can call her Julie. But don't you ever talk about your other mother. Come on inside and see your new home. Okay. I'll never call anyone mommy except my own. Julie tried to be a good caregiver. Every year she bought all our school clothes. Maddie, who is four years older than I. Stanley, who is two years older. And me, the youngest. Julie also prepared good meals for us. But the heart knows his own bitterness. I secretly mourned for my mother all through elementary school and into junior high, when desegregation brought protests and even riots into our schools. They never should have bust you kids there. I'm not scared, Dad. Being a cheerleader, I'm used to black students. One of the athletes even protected me from a guy who was threatening me. Just keep your wits about you. Dad, I can swim underwater from one end of the pool to the other. 
and I can swim way out in the ocean. I'm not afraid of deep water or anything. What's your point? I want to join the swim team. I wouldn't do that. It'll make your shoulders big. I was very athletic, able to scale a 20-foot palm tree to get a coconut. Neighborhood kids chose me first in a game of football because I ran fast, caught the ball, and did some serious tackling. Friends and my love of sports filled the void of mother's love. But in ninth grade, I was relocated to a different school, and I felt adrift. I lost all the friends, teachers, and activities I had garnered. I was heartbroken. And on the plus side, I reunited with an old friend from grade school. Lori's parents were divorced, and like me, she was unsupervised. Can you spend the night at my house, Diane? Your dad won't care, Lori? Nah, he just watches TV on Friday night. He won't care if you come over. Are you sure? Of course. And then we can try some of my dad's vodka. He lets you? <laughs> he's not gonna know. How are you gonna do it if he's home? I told him we wanted to set up a tent in the backyard. <laughs> And then when he goes to bed, I'm going to sneak in the house and get the bottle. I'm so glad we're in some of the same classes. Me too. And we can walk to school together. Hey, let's go shopping after school, okay? I need some jewelry. It's cool that the store is right across from the school. The first time I watched her steal jewelry at the store, I was dumbstruck. Then she asked me if I wanted anything, and I decided to try her method. My heart pounded with fear because I had never stolen before. My stealing became easier each time until it didn't bother me. We perverted what was right, and it gained me nothing. Every day after school, a small group of us walked home together, using a trail beside thick woods. One day, we sat on logs, and one of the guys offered cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How'd you get those? How do you think? I've never smoked one before. Oh, come on, Diane. Give it a try. Yeah, come, on. Yeah, come on, just do uh, it. It's so easy. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you don't throw it on the ground. <laughs> just try again. No, not interested. <laughs> this is nasty. Everything I tried left me empty. Nothing took the place of my longing for mom whose lap had been snatched away. Was she dead or alive? Dad took offense at the mention of her name, so I couldn't ask. When I was 15, I took matters into my own hands, looked in the phone book until I found a name like hers. Then I dialed. Hello? Is Mary Elizabeth Brown there? Mom, this, this is Diane. Diane who? Your daughter. Diane? Oh, Diane! <laughs> I can't believe it! How are you, Diane? I missed you so much. Oh, I've missed you too. You must be 15 now. Ninth grade. Oh. Did you marry again? Dad did. I know he did, but I'm still single. Living with someone. Do you work or what? Yes, I'm the head waitress at an elegant restaurant in Palm Beach. But I'm packing to move up north. Moving? When? I was planning to leave in a few days. But Diane, you, you made me change my mind. I, I'm staying. You just gave me hope. We can write letters. The boy next door will let you send them to his house and he'll give them to me. Okay, but, but be careful. I, I hate to think of your dad's reaction. I... I don't want you to get in trouble. I was so elated. Secretly, we exchanged a few letters and pictures. I didn't know that the hidden things of dishonesty demolish inner peace. When summer came, Mom and I arranged to see each other. We met on the seashore of Palm Beach where we had often gone before the family broke apart. And there, after hugs and more tears, Mom and I got reacquainted. I eloped with your dad to get away from my abusive father. I just married too young, Diane. Plus, your dad was a hopeless gambler, always losing our money. And that pushed me away from him. And between the two of them, from men in general, the men in my life let me down. But 
dad didn't abuse you, did he? No. We were just mismatched. So poor all the time. We lived in an apartment and I cleaned empty apartments to help pay the rent. I remember you were a scout leader. You took us on a camping trip. Yes. I'm sorry my leaving was so hard for you, Diane. I remember the night you left. I looked out the window and saw a red station wagon with a dent in the side. And somebody put your suitcase in the trunk. I was crying so hard I couldn't see. I'll take you to where I live and you can meet my friend. In a wooded area sat Mom's house, half hidden by trees and bushes. The house seemed to be made by an amateur of logs and bricks. A red station wagon with a dented side sat in the tiny yard. Mom's friend, Jean, met us, but I couldn't tell if Jean was male or female. His or her voice was neither masculine nor feminine, and he or she had a military-style haircut and wore jeans. Mom showed me the house. This house sure is different. Cobblestone floors, sculpture everywhere, hanging plants and all. Well, Jean is an artist, a ceramic tile expert. And this is my bedroom. Where is Jean's bedroom? Right here, with me. Oh. So Jean was a woman, and she was the one who took my mother from our family. I felt very confused about everything, but shared with no one. School started again, with me in the 10th grade. As soon as I turned 16, Mom helped me get a job as hostess at the restaurant where she worked. I didn't tell Dad about our relationship, but one Friday night, he confronted me. Are you seeing your mother? Julie found these letters in your drawer. Yes, I am. Why? Because she's my mom. I hired a detective to follow her. You know she's a lesbian? Yes. You're not allowed to hang around your mom. She threatened to kill you kids. I want to hear mom's side of the story. Can I have my letters back? We'll hear the rest of Diane's story in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. Try getting a job if you have no address and haven't had a shower in days or weeks. Try buying food if you have no money. Now add to that dilemma the care of a baby or a small child, and you will see the difficulty homeless women face. Why are they homeless? There are multiple possibilities, but Pacific Art Emissions' concern is for the welfare of the women and children, for the need to change their circumstances, and our Women and Children's Division does that. Women that have an alcohol or drug addiction issue begin with our New Life program, getting free of their addiction before tackling other classes. We provide a safe place to sleep and regroup, whatever the circumstances or the age of the children. The mission's goal is to help these women lead successful lives, working and contributing to society. To learn more about this ministry to women and children, visit our website, unshackled.org, or write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. In the 10th grade, some of the kids in our group started smoking marijuana on the way to school. A bad idea. Ships without rudders, we drifted into dangerous currents and thought we were going somewhere. But without counsel, purposes are disappointed. We began skipping school. Then students at school began to die from drug overdoses and accidents. And a gloomy feeling settled over me. Are you okay? I'm all right. You've been sitting out here a long time. Something wrong? What's wrong, Diane? Just confused. You want to see someone? A psychiatrist? Mm. Okay. Dad made an appointment for me to see a psychiatrist. Before I went to the doctor, I wrote down my inner thoughts. How I found a wire that I shaped into a heart and hung it upside down in my room. My upside down heart. 
The doctor read my notes and talked about peer pressure. Two weeks later, we discussed the same issue, and I knew he wasn't what I needed. Dad let me live with some hippie friends that summer. Diane! Lori! Haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Are you still living with your boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, what about you? I'm staying with Steve and Cindy till school starts. Cool. You can get high anytime. We've tried every kind of drug you can name, but I don't want to get hooked on any of them. What are you doing with that dry cleaning truck? My job. I deliver cleaning. Sometimes I pick up clothes at this store that customers have messed up, and on the way out, I help myself to clothes on the rack. Oh, license to steal. <laughs> What a fool I was and didn't know it. Dad made me move back home to finish high school. I was still depressed and confused and began to isolate myself from my friends. But I worked part-time at a car wash. I started a diary that I addressed to a God I wasn't sure existed. Dear God, it's been a rough world. Please help me to survive in this changing, confusing place of anxiety. I need your help. I'm alone. I need you. Two days later, I wrote, I'm not good enough for God. Now I feel hopeless. If I'm not good enough for God, who is there? My conversations with God continued. God, if you're real, please show yourself to me. What is wrong with me? I am so messed up. I want to party with my friends, but I'm miserable when I do. What is life all about? I don't know what to do. I need your help. Diane, the school called and said you may not graduate. What? You have two Fs, three Ds, and one C. That's oh. unacceptable. Man. What's wrong with you? Maybe it's because I work and don't have time to study. Maybe it's because of all these absences. Are you cutting class? Sometimes. Bring up your math from a D to a C and they'll let you graduate. I became very interested in math. I also became interested in other religions. Hinduism, Buddhism. Neither one brought peace to my troubled heart, but the incense made my room smell nice. I passed a church on my way to work a church that had a sign out front for announcements. One day after work, I stopped by. Hello, can I help you? Can you print off the quotes you post outside on the sign? How come you need them? I read them on the way to work. Sometimes you take them down before I can copy them. I see. Just a moment. She printed a list of the quotes, and one of them said, Fear nothing. God is always close by. I didn't attend services, though. I just kept writing in my diary to God, crying out for help as former friends continued to disintegrate and die because of drugs. I wasn't hooked on drugs, but I couldn't discern the other hooks fastened on me, the confusion and bitterness. I graduated. My whole family was there except Mom. No one gave me a party or gifts, and my family dispersed after the ceremony. I had isolated myself from friends, so none of them invited me to their parties. I was alone. Dad, I'm going to stay with Steve and Cindy for a few weeks. Take all your things. Take all my things? And don't come back. Devastated isn't a strong enough word to describe my feelings. I became a vagabond. My low-paying jobs didn't earn enough for me to rent a real apartment, so I lived here and there. From August to the end of the year, I lived in seven different places, from one friend to another. My friends were drug dealers or drug users. When my confusion wore on them, then it was time for me to leave. I even tried sharing a house with four guys all strangers to me. After six days, they asked me to move out because they were uncomfortable. So, I moved into the Y, where I met Leslie. So you traded all male roommates for all female ones? 
I was pretty uncomfortable sharing a house with four guys. I don't recommend it, Leslie. <laughs> I like your adventurous spirit. Born of necessity. Has it ever gotten you in trouble? Has it ever? <laughs> Life is not easy, is it? Payments on my room, insurance, loan, and car. Then I need food, doctor's payments, dentist payments. It's endless. Welcome to adulthood. At least my car wash job is right down the street. I admire your determination. I can't believe how hard it is to make ends meet on minimum wages. I like the why because it's inexpensive. It's also nice and quiet. They have rules and they enforce them. That's the problem with the kids I know. They do whatever they want when they want. Mostly drugs. I've heard. I've lost so many friends to drug overdoses. One guy lost his mind. You don't do drugs. I've tried most of them, even heroin, but it's a waste. Now I avoid drugs and the kids who use them. They need to spend some time in the Army. Might straighten them out. I've been thinking about doing that, signing up. Your time is not your own in the Army, Diane. It isn't now, either. I need a second job to stay afloat. At least the Army feeds you and gives you a place to live. In December, I took the army test, but failed the math. In my diary, I wrote, I would love to be reborn, to start over again. At Christmas, my brother and I, mom and her friend, spent the day with my sister, the first Christmas I'd spent with mom since I was a child. I still felt confused about things, though. After Christmas, I ran around trying to find a second job. I filled out applications and tried a dishwashing job that hurt my back and wasn't worth the low pay. Then I took a job as a gas station clerk. December 31st came, and Leslie invited me to a watch night service. What a beautiful night. Full moon, stars galore. And the ocean, the palm trees. I love to sleep out here at night on the beach. Alone? Have you ever done that? Yes. Once I slept in my car and a plainclothes policeman knocked on the car window and about scared me to death. He told me to leave, that it wasn't safe. Probably wasn't. How do you like your new job? I start tomorrow. The only girl, working with four or five guys. I hope it works out. Me too. The car sure didn't work out. I lost a thousand dollars when I sold it. Ugh, bummer. I don't even want to talk about it. Tell me about the new job then. The best thing is, the gas station is right across from the community college. Maybe I can start classes there. You have many options, Diane. And the church is one. Here we are. The title of my short exhortation is Stirred But Never Changed. Many people come to church services and their hearts are stirred. The Lord has been talking to them, urging them, drawing them. But life is happening too fast, or it's too scary, and they never quite turn things around. Is that true of you, my friend? Do you hear inspiring music, maybe a personal testimony from someone whose life has been changed? And you want to be different. You need to change, and you know it. But stirring is as far as it gets. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The devil doesn't care how much you're stirred, how many New Year's resolutions you make and fail to keep. Delay and deception are Satan's main tactical plan. His overall objective is to ruin you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Friends, you will not be able to understand, let alone defeat on your own, the darkness in your own heart, in your family, in the city, in the world. You are in over your head. Let God help you with that. He loves you and wants to be a part of your life. All my questions about God, about the meaning of life and what I should do, infused my mind as I got on my knees. Life at the Y, taking me away from the hippie life and drugs, had prepared me to seek God. And seek Him, I did. I prayed. Dear God, I believe you're real. I want to follow you. Please help me to start all over. 
but I don't know how. Please show me what to do. A sense of calm permeated my inner spirit. I felt God communicating with me, telling me to give up everything bad and to look toward him, and I would be heading in the right direction. It's a good thing we don't know the future because I had a bumpy road ahead with six more places to live in less than a year. But I didn't feel so alone. I could reach out to God now. Diane wasn't out of the woods. And next week, we'll hear about the challenges she faced and the answer that came to her. Listening friend, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you need rest for your soul, there is no one like Jesus, no one who can forgive the past and bring hope for the future. Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. You can do that right now by praying with us. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again, alive forevermore, able to save me now. Save me, Lord. Come into my life and change me. Thank you for the gift of salvation and eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.